Hey everybody, this is Tracy here with another edition of A View from Tracy's Point. And today I just have a quick update on the appeal to the United States Second Circuit on behalf of Robert Kelly and his request for um, home confinement during the COVID-19 as he awaits um, trial. Um, before I get into that, you guys may not have heard this because I had to scour Google to find this information. But last week, um, Michael Alvinati was issued an extension on his home confinement. You guys know that he was found guilty in the Nike case and he was allowed to go home um, for 90 days due to COVID. He was scheduled to return on uh, July 24th, but they put in a motion to have that extended. And so a judge granted him that extension. And so he received a 60 day um, extension on the 90 days. So now he doesn't have to report back to jail until September 24th, which is really interesting because he is supposed to be sentenced on that Nike case on August 19th. Now he had a previous sentencing date that I believe was in May. I believe it was supposed to be May, but I know he had an earlier sentencing date, but due to COVID, they pushed it out to August 19th. So as it stands now, Michael Avenatti is supposed to be sentenced on August 19th, but a judge has extended his home confinement until September 24th, saying that he doesn't have to report back to jail. So if they have that sentencing, I am not sure if he will then have to report to prison immediately or if they will still give him until September 24th to go back in. But back to um, Robert Kelly's case and the appeal that his attorneys filed. And some of you were asking me, you know, um, how does this work? And so I did a little research and I actually, actually posted in the comments that um, the defense filed the motion for an appeal and so the prosecution had an opportunity to respond, which they did on Friday. They submitted their response. And so um, Greenberg, not Greenberg, but um, his defense team, because I think it's the guys in Thomas, um, can't think of his last name, but it's a appeals attorney in New York that's actually handling this. So he has the option now to come back and rebut what the prosecution said, or he can just say, you know, he's ready for the appeals court to determine what they want to do. So the appeals court has two options. They can take the motions that have been filed and make a decision and say, yes, he can leave or no, he can't leave. Or they can order the attorneys to come in. And so the defense will get to give an oral argument the prosecution will get to give an oral argument and then the panel on the appeals court so it's not just one judge on the appeals court that gets to make the de the decision um there is multiple judges i'm not sure of the number but then they will confer and decide whether or not they will let um, him out you know, pending trial or if they're going to side with the Eastern District of New York. So the response that they filed was 112 pages. I'm not reading 112 pages. I'm not even going to read one page in this video. I'm basically going to let you guys know that they just basically repeated everything that they have said in the prior three motions um, to have Mr. Kelly released, you know, pending trial. And so they basically just rehashed that. Um, they resubmitted the indictments that were filed against him, the superseding indictments. They included the information from the Northern District of Illinois case to kind of support what they were saying in their case. And so basically, if you want to know what the um, Northern District I'm sorry, what the Eastern District of New York said 
in their response to the request um, to the appeals court, just go back and watch any video that I have done on um, the requests that have been submitted <laughs> for his release and their rebuttal as well as Ann Dunley's you know, support of the rebuttal by the Eastern District of New York. And you will have exactly what they said. They didn't even try to add any additional information. They just basically copied and pasted everything from their prior responses to the defense into this um, document to the appeals court. I mean, basically just talked about the judge in Illinois who said that um, he shouldn't be required or allowed to have bond because of the, the charges against him, that the second judge in the Illinois case agreed that he shouldn't be allowed to have bond. You know, they went on with the, he's a dangerous criminal, like he's out here um, murdering people and chopping people up. And you know, that there's no condition under the sun that would assure that he won't flee the country, you know, and we've already discussed the fact that he can't flee the country because um, nobody wants Americans. You guys been reading in the news where they turning people back. These folks getting on these private planes thinking they getting ready to fly to these countries and these countries are not letting them land. And so just the same old, same old. And so I'm not going to give it any more credence, any more energy on what the Eastern District of New York is saying in this case, because they are basically just um, repeating what they've already said. So for those of you who want to know what was the next step, the next step has taken place. The Eastern District of New York has responded as, you know, they always do. And so now the next step is whether or not the attorney in New York for um, Robert is going to um, submit a rebuttal or if he's going to let it go and then allow the appeals court to decide whether or not they are going to let him go home or if they want to bring both sides in and hear oral arguments before making a decision on the case and once again i don't think they have a time frame for which they have to do this where they have to convene and make a decision but i'm thinking because of the severity the fact that it has to do with covid the fact that um, his trial is supposed to start in september which is two months away that they may um, hurry up and make a decision. And there was a part in there where they were saying that, oh, they're saying that, you know, he won't be able to prepare for trial. You know, his trial starts in September and he won't have an opportunity to prepare because of the jails not allowing people to come in. And they basically said that that's not their problem, that the jails have made these rules, that they have no control over the rules that the Bureau of Prison is making. So the fact that um, that R. Kelly cannot prepare, can't meet with his attorneys due to these restrictions is not their problem. So guys, let me know what you think as always. <laughs> so leave your comments below, rate the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And until the next time, I shall talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.